opening day 2023 has come and gone and it gave us some pretty crazy moments. Look at this no look 360 no scope from Hunter Renfro of the Angels. O'Neill Cruz, he turned on a 101 mile per hour fastball for a home run and oh yeah, Aaron Judge, he was back doing Aaron Judge things. If you're brand new to the channel, this is a series called MLB Recap. It's pretty simple. We recap every single game from the day before. So if you want to stay up to date on the game of baseball, this is the perfect place to be. Now a few random things before we get into the actual games from yesterday. Rafael Devers became the first player in Major League Baseball history to get struck out via the pitch clock. So he struck out without actually striking out. Let me know in the comments down below, what did you make of the game one slates featuring the pitch clock? Because a lot of the games, they just flew by. It did its job. But there were some technical difficulties and also Rafael Devers striking out without striking out. That's not a great look. This dude right here snuck onto the field at Dodger Stadium. He got down on one knee. So all he wanted to do was propose and oh my God, he got tackled into the quantum mania. He's probably going to have a meetup with Kang in the next few days to talk about his mistakes. But yeah, my reaction was the same reaction as Lourdes Gurriel Jr., the Diamondbacks left fielder. Kind of like, what just happened? Why did he tackle him like that? I mean, he was just sitting there. And then also Megan the Stallion, not the, Megan the Stallion almost threw out the first pitch to um second base. I don't know what was happening there, so we're just going to go ahead and move on. All right, let's get into the games from yesterday. Now, speaking of games, make sure that you guys are saving yourself 20 bucks off using code FUZZY on SeatGeek. Now, let's talk about the Braves and the Nationals first because Patrick Corbin, he was in mid-season form, which means that he was giving up walks left and right, and he got pulled before it could get any worse. I think he went three innings. Max Fried, on the other hand, was dealing up until his hamstring gave out. I feel so bad for him because I know that he worked really hard this spring training. I mean, I don't know that for sure, but it looked like he did. Unfortunately, he's probably going to land on the IL with that hamstring injury. Travis Starno had a monster day going four for five with two runs batted in. As the Atlanta Braves, they beat the hapless Nationals seven to two. The Nationals, they might struggle to win 50 or 60 games this year. They are terrible. Now, because we just talked about Max Fried and his injury, I do want to talk about a fellow ace that is also going on the shelf as well. Justin Verlander, he found himself on the injured list as well after an MRI revealed that he has a slight tear, a strain in his shoulder. The same injury as Tristan McKenzie, so I expect both Tristan McKenzie and Justin Verlander to be out for the next five to seven weeks. Let's talk about JV's team though. The Mets, they faced off against the Marlins and this was a super fun matchup. We had the 2022 NL Cy Young winner Sandy Alcantara facing off against the three-time winner Max Scherzer. The Mets, they scored their first three like it was a game of MLB The Show, just a bunch of dinks and dunks. Enter Garrett Cooper of the Marlins. The 2022 All-Star pummeled a 422-foot home run to tied up at three runs apiece. He is a Mets killer, that's for sure. Luckily, the Mets, they had Brandon Nimmo. He saved them. He put the team on his back. And David Robertson, he stepped in in replacement of Edwin Diaz, and he picked up his first save of the year. David Robertson is going to be one of the more underrated pickups of the entire offseason because of that Diaz injury. Let's go to the other New York squad, shall we? The Yankees and the Giants, they faced off. We saw a couple of Arson Judge jerseys. If you guys don't remember, Aaron Judge, it was reported that he was going to the Giants, but the guy who reported it misspelt Aaron and said arson instead. I love baseball. Aaron Judge, he was back doing Aaron Judge things. He set an AL record for home runs just a year ago in 2022. And then he hit the very first home run of anyone in 2023. Anthony Volpe, he made his debut. He got on base with a walk. He had an easy stolen base. I can't wait to see more and more of him. By the way, another big time rookie, Jordan Walker, made his debut. Stick around for that. Glaber Torres, as you just saw, he wanted to remind fans that once upon a time, he almost had a 40 home run season. He smacked a two run home run for his first of the year. Garrett Cole dominated the Giants lineup. Zero earned runs, 11 strikeouts. He looked nearly unhittable. The Yankees, they end up with five runs after singles from DJ and Judge. They secured a 5 to nothing shutout victory over Logan Webb and the Giants. Since we talked about one shutout, let's go ahead and group all of the shutouts from yesterday all together. Jose Siri, he belted one 400 feet for the Tampa Bay Rays. And Shane McClanahan, feasted on the Tigers. Six strikeouts over six shutout innings. He was throwing darts all day long. I don't know how anyone gets a base hit off that guy. Randy Arozarena, he drove in his first RBI of the year in the sixth inning and Wander Franco, he jumped on this pitch to go the other way to seal a 4-0 victory for the Rays over the Tigers. The Guardians were visiting the Mariners where Shane Bieber and Luis Castillo they were battling it out like they were back in high school and their crush was in the stands like they were battling for her attention. They both went six shutout innings. I was happy with 
Shane's performance, but Luis Castillo and the Seattle Mariners pitching staff, my God, they put on a clinic. Castillo went six innings, only allowed one base hit, only four hits allowed total by the Seattle pitching staff, and Ty France, he rewarded their efforts with a three-run home run the other way. One of the better swings I saw all day yesterday, James Karinczak, he does not look like James Karinczak with the pitch clock because he just feels rushed and I don't like what I saw. The Twins and the Royals, that Pablo Lopez trade is already proving to be a good one. The Twins GM, they probably feel like Jimmy Neutron after a brain blast because he was dicing people up. Now it was the Royals, so take it with a grain of salt, but I like the Royals offense. I feel like they could be sneaky good. Pablo Lopez had eight strikeouts over nearly six shutout innings and his offense, they did just enough to grab his first win as a member of Minnesota. Again, I know it was against the Royals, but as a Guardians fan, that's a terrifying sign. Pablo Lopez is nasty in his opening day debut for the Twins. Yeah, that is a scary sentence and just the fact that they now have Sonny Gray going and they also have Joe Ryan who is disgusting. The Twins are going to be good. Two interdivision rivals faced off the Cubs and the Brewers and we had some newcomers for the Cubs having themselves a day. Dansby Swanson, he was like one for a hundred in spring training, but I guess he was just saving his magic for the actual regular season. Mancini, he grabbed an RBI base hit as well while Marcus Stroman was out there twirling an absolute gem. By the way, all of those runs came against Corbin Burns, so that's pretty impressive, but then again, maybe Corbin Burns is throwing because he's not happy with the Brewers. I'm just kidding. That is definitely not happening, but maybe he wanted some payback. I don't know. Anyways, like I mentioned, Stroman, he shoved it for six shutout innings with eight strikeouts. He was glowing about his infield defense. I mean, how could you not when you have Dansby Swanson and Nico Horner up the middle? That defense is sick. Holy scoring, the Orioles and the Red Sox. Now, real quick, I do want to show Ramon Urias his two-run home run. Very quietly, he's become a very productive major league player. He basically has a career 110 OPS plus, which is really good. Mateo and Ali, they both single in a few more in the fifth to make it eight to two. And then the same thing happened in the seventh, but instead of Mateo, it was Mullins and Ali. Felix Bautista, the mountain as they call him, almost gave up the lead, but Baltimore, they barely win 10 to nine as Ali Rutschman went five for five with four RBIs and a home run. I think that's good. Speaking of a 10-9 ball game, the Jays and the Cardinals finished with the exact same score. So let's see who came away victorious. Dalton Varsho, he picked up his first RBI as a Blue Jay and Alejandro Kirk gave it to Wayno. And then you have Bo Bichette adding insult to injury later in the fourth inning. Tyler O'Neill, good for you, bro. He had a horrific 2022. I want a bounce back season from him so bad. Oh my God, now it's tied up all over again. Brendan Donovan, that new stance that he created in the off season, it is real. He wanted more power. He has been getting it both in spring and the first game of the season. St. Louis, they actually stole the lead in the seventh on Jordan Walker's first RBI. I know it was a ground up, but still his first RBI of his young career. He's going to be a monster as well, just like Volpe. But Vladimir Guerrero Jr. said that's enough. His three RBI seal it for the Toronto Blue Jays. So the final one was on an RBI sack fly. Jordan Romano, he stepped in and he grabbed the save. Now I'm not going to lie. It's always kind of tough to recap high scoring games because MLB only allows you so much footage before they say, hey, that's a copyright claim. So I'm trying my best. Hopefully you guys enjoyed because that was a fun game to recap. By the way, Jordan Walker, the rookie, threw a baseball 101 miles an hour from the outfield. That is the fastest tracked outfield throw by any outfielder in Cardinals history. He's still just 20. Another high scoring game, we have the Rangers and the Phillies. Jacob deGrom, more like Jacob DeMid. Okay, all jokes aside, I think that Jacob is gonna be fine, but you have to tip your cap to the Phillies offense for jumping on him. Alec Bohm, he teed off, and then Trey Turner smacked the first triple of the 2023 season. He knocked in Brandon Marsh in the process, and then every Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. If you know that reference, bless you. That is just a segue into me saying that the Rangers, they started throwing haymakers to get back into this one. Jonah Heim had a two-run double. Robbie Grossman lifted off against Aaron Nola. Grossman is way better against lefty, so that is a good sign right there if he's going yard off a of righty. The Rangers, they dink and they dunk for a few innings until Brad Miller, he blasted off in the fifth inning. Yeah, these last few games, I don't know if the pitch clock was a factor or what, but there was awful pitching galore, scoring all the way around. Round. They were fun to watch. You know, it was not fun to watch this Angels and A's game after Shohei Otani left the game. And even up until that, both offenses looked putrid. But luckily, Shohei Otani was looking disgusting. He went six shutout innings with two hits allowed, 10 strikeouts. All right. He also got some help from Hunter Renfro on that 360 no scope grab. He wasn't even looking and somehow made the grab. But the Angels, just like Patrick Corbin, they were back in midseason form. The Angels had zero, zero extra base hits and the bullpen imploded yet again. 
again. Good for Tony Kemp and Aledmus Diaz for fighting back, I guess. But the Angels became the first team in Major League Baseball history to have a pitcher have 10 strikeouts, no earned runs on opening day, and they still lose the game. Teams were 25 and 0. Now they're 25 and 1. I lost my parlay because of this. So right now, the Angels, I hate them. The Pirates and the Reds faced off for a pretty fun game. Not gonna lie. Now I want to do some quick math with you guys. What happens when you add O'Neill Cruz to a 101 mile per hour fastball? Yeah, that happens. 112 miles an hour off the bat. O'Neill Cruz, he could steal 30 bags. He could hit 30 home runs, but he might also strike out 200 times. But yesterday, he took two walks and didn't strike out one time. So good for him. The Reds, they did get back into it after Spencer Steer had a two run bomb and a bomb it was 440 feet. Jason Vossler, he tied it up after a two run triple. Cruz, he lifted a go ahead RBI sack fly in the eighth. And Team USA pitcher David Bednar, he struck out two for his first save of the year. That was a fun game. I liked that. I enjoyed it. The White Sox and the Astros, another one run ball game to recap. Pitching, pitching, pitching was the theme of the first half in this one. Framber Valdez, he continues to get better and better. Five shutout innings, and the same for Dylan Cease, but I believe that he threw five perfect innings to start the game. 15 up, 15 down. He struck out 10 over 6. ESPN, they just did not want to show that, apparently. Both guys are going to be aces for the next five or six years. I can't wait to watch the rest of their careers pan out. Now, the Astros, they did grab a lead after Dylan Cease left the game, but Grandal, he got that run back. Just like Tyler O'Neill, I'm hoping for a bounce back season for Yasmani Grandal. Andrew Vaughn, he doubled in two right in front of the guy he replaced, Jose Abreu. The pressure is not going to phase that kid at all. Jordan Alvarez, speaking of pressure, not phasing anyone, he hit one to the Hubble Telescope, 445 feet. He cut it to a one-run game, but Ronaldo Lopez, he nailed it down for a 3-2 victory over the Astros. Let's move over to the Dodgers game. The Dodgers and the Diamondbacks, over 50,000 people jammed into Dodger Stadium, and the Dodgers, they put on an offensive clinic. Will Smith had a two-run single in the third, and after Julio got kind of roughed up by the Diamondbacks, Will Smith stole the lead back with another RBI base hit later in the fifth inning. There's J.D. Martinez and David Peralta. First time Dodgers getting their first RBIs in that little white and blue uniform. I love the Dodgers uniform, even though it's pretty simplistic. Julio, he settled down for a quality start. Six strikeouts, two earned runs over six innings. And there's the kid again, James Outman. I cannot believe that he was wasting away while Joey Gallo and Cody Bellinger were hitting a buck 80. Not anymore. James Outman, he's going to be a key to the Dodgers' success. They went easy eight to two. The Rockies faced off against the Padres and Xander Bogart's debut was spoiled by the Rockies, who went off yesterday. They scored seven runs against the Padres pitching staff as CJ Crone added to his first inning RBI single with a wall scraper, three run home run in the fifth inning. Chris Bryant, I'm so happy that he's back and healthy. He plated another run on an RBI single later in the game. And I didn't even talk about Herman Marquez. He looked very good. Five strikeouts, no walks over six innings. And there he is again. CJ Crone is now your leader in home runs. He's the only one that had two yesterday. And then you have Montero. I botch his first name every single time. El Alaris. Alaris Montero connected on his first home run of the season as the Rockies. They win big 7-2 over the Padres. That does it for today's opening day recap. I hope that you all enjoyed. I am so happy that baseball and these recaps are back. Thank you so much for all the support recently and be safe and catch you tomorrow.